Good morning. Welcome to Fiscalini Farms. I am uh, the third generation of Fiscalini's to operate this property. My grandfather actually bought this piece of property in 1912, and we've been uh, dairy farming here ever since. Uh, fourth generation dairy farmer in California. My great grandfather moved here, moved to Southern California from Switzerland in, in the 1880s, and we can trace our roots back to dairy farming and cheese making in Switzerland in 1705. So we've got 300 years of, of, of milk in my blood, I guess. <laughs> My son, who's 26 years old, is up in the office right now. Um, he is the next generation uh, to be involved here. So we, we started the digester thoughts about three, four years ago. Actually started building it in 2007. Expected to have it up and running uh, by the end of 2008 or earlier. Actually got it running uh, the very end of 2008 just for a day to satisfy some regulatory hurdles and we started actually running the digester on a full-time basis in the engine out here on uh, 1st of June last year so we're, we're coming up on a year we are currently making about 500 to 550 kW kilowatt hours of electricity day in day out um, if you look behind the bus you can see that there is a, uh, a building over there and the door is open there's a great big orange engine back there it's a, an 1100 horsepower engine is capable of making 710 kilowatts of electricity. When we decided to build this thing, uh, we sized it for the amount of cows we had on the dairy. Uh, plan on building a new cheese plant someday, so we sized it to use all of the whey that would come out of the new cheese plant. And then also, we grow a third crop every year field across the road over there has our winter wheat in it, which we would be cutting today if it didn't rain. We cut it three weeks ago if it didn't rain. Um, as soon as the wheat's off, we'll put a crop of corn in. That'll come off um, late August, early September. And then most farmers in this area simply wait for a couple of months and then they plant their winter crop again. We throw in a crop of sedan grass, um, which we have been using for about 10 years to try to satisfy some of the regulators on having a dairy this size on the number of acres we have, we can harvest more nitrogen by putting this crop in. The problem is, it's at an iffy time of the year. We plant it in September and then we start harvesting it in October. Oftentimes we get rain, and lots of rain, whatever. So we can't make a really high quality crop out of it sometimes. Now that we've got the digesters, we're actually planting that crop to use in the digesters to make additional electricity. Since we started the project, um, sex semen became a um, state-of-the-art product that a lot of dairymen use, so we actually started using sex semen, and we grew our replacement herd larger than we could actually house here on site. And again, with regulators where they are today, for me to build a new barn, I don't not only have to go to the local planning commission and get permission, I've got to go to the airborne, the water board, and whatever. I made a management decision to move some of those animals off site. So we've got 800 heifers that are being raised by someone other than ourselves, not on this site. So we lost the manure of those 800 animals to go into the digester. So instead of the digester operating at say 600 or 650 kW right now, it's operating at 500 to 550 because we lost some of that manure. So it's not as efficient as we'd like it to be, but there's good reasons for it to be that way. So the 550 kW that we produce supplies all of the electricity we need for the entire farm operation. We've got three major uh, energy hogs here. The dairy barn, which runs basically 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The digester itself, which obviously must run 24 hours a day, 365 has a lot of pumps and, and motors and whatever. And in our cheese facility, which is the white building down there, uh, we've got refrigeration running there every single day of the year. And we make cheese five days a week and we package cheese five days a week. So those three uh, meters use the majority of the electricity that we uh, need on the dairy. This engine supplies enough electricity to run the entire farm, including our houses and whatever. And still we've got enough electricity that goes back into the grid, produces electricity to that, the, uh, the engine uh, 
uh, it's an internal combustion engine. Just like all of the cars that you drive, it's got a radiator to keep it cool. We've got hot water that comes out of the engine that has to be cooled. It's not running 60 miles an hour down the road, so it's stationary. So in order to cool it, we have to have a, a very large five to seven horsepower motor to run a big blade to keep the thing cool. Instead of doing that, we're taking the engine heat and first we run it through a heat exchanger and then we run uh, two two inch lines, one going out, one coming back down to the digesters. At the digesters, we've got almost two million gallons of stuff in these two tanks. Those tanks are running at 101 degrees. 101 degrees comes from the heat from the engine. The engine's still running hot enough that we have to turn the radiator on. This morning we shut the engine off to do an oil change and we were supposed to have a, uh, a team out here to do some additional work and some things went wrong so we're back up and running. Uh, but soon, sometime this week, early next week, we're going to hook up a second heat exchanger which will heat two 500 gallon tanks of water to 200 degrees which will be piped to the dairy barn and to our cheese plant. So all of the sanitation that we do where we require hot water to clean pipelines, meters, cheese vats and whatever will come from waste heat from the engine. Uh, once that's done, uh, we're going to hook up a, a calf pasteurizer where we, we pasteurize the milk that we feed our calves that comes from our hospital. That will be hooked up to it as well. If we still have residual heat left over after that, our thoughts are do we actually want to build a greenhouse somewhere and possibly grow some sort of greenhouse product or do I want to take uh, heat a half a mile and run it underground to my house and heat my swimming pool <laughs> That is a thought. You know, we've got heat that we need to use up. So uh, you know, we're constantly thinking. As far as regulatory hurdles, we've had got two agencies that basically uh, we, we need permits from. One is the Regional Water Quality Control Board and one is the uh, Air Resources, uh, air, air, the Air District, the, the uh, San Joaquin Valley Air, San Joaquin Valley air, air Pollution, pollution Control. control. Yeah. As many words uh, as possible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the Air Board is concerned about, they say they're concerned about methane, carbon dioxide, greenhouse gases. They don't really care about anything other than NOx and SOx, nitrous oxide and sulfuric, whatever. Um, the engine right now is running with a, uh, it's a engine made in Spain specifically to run on biogas. It's not a redesigned engine that was meant to run on diesel fuel. Um, the Air Board required me to put a catalytic converter on it of about a quarter million dollars, um, which I was held ransom, basically. I couldn't start the engine without it. So we've got that on. The engine company suggested it wouldn't work. It does appear that it is working. Uh, so we are now running about four to five parts per million of NOx after the catalytic converter. That's still more, than, zero, zero is too high as far as the airport yeah. is concerned. <laughs> So we are actually looking at a new technology, which we have a, uh, a research grant uh, yet this year, where we will run the exhaust from the engine into some sort of an algae uh, device, where we will let the algae use the nitrogen in the engine exhaust grow algae, the exhaust will heat the, the water so the algae will have a nice warm temperature to, to thrive in, and those algae should make biodiesel fuels. So again, we will clean up the environment even more than we already are to try to keep one agency happy, and at the same time, we hope it will efficiently make biodiesel so that that loader that keeps interfering with us making noise, uh -huh. we won't have to buy diesel fuel, and again, import oil from Iraq or whatever to, to run our farm. So uh, the other agency is the Water Board, which again, both agencies know nothing about the technology here, so they're both very concerned that there's something bad going on. But water Board 